QuickBooks Desktop 2023 Rental Income Invoice from Estimant. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop, Get Great Guitars Practice File. We started up in a prior presentation going through the setup process we do every time. Maximize the home page to the gray area, view drop down, noting we've got the hide icon bar open, windows list checked off, open windows open on the left. Reports drop down, company financial PL profit and loss change that range from 10123 to 123123. Customize it. We want to go to the fonts and numbers. I'm going to increase the size of those fonts to 14. Okay. Yes and okay. A reports drop down again, company and financial again, but this time the balance sheet. Customize it, fonting to the numbering to change it to 14. Oh, yes. K. And hold on a second. We got to customize the range. 010123 to 123123 is the range. Okay. That's the setup process we've been doing every time. We're going to go back to the home page, remembering that our primary source of income for this practice problem has been the selling of inventory. We've been focusing in on the inventory because that's usually the most complex thing to be dealing with because we have to track the inventory. But we will also want to think about a service item. So we've entered a couple different service items. We've thought about a job cost system where we're going to basically have like a, it would be similar to a bookkeeping or law firm where we enter time, use that time to create invoices. And then last time we thought about a rental kind of setup, in our case, renting out equipment where we've made the estimate first, someone imagining someone calls in for the rental of band equipment. We set up some items to uh, drive the, the process of us entering estimates and invoices. And we then cr uh, took a receive payment, getting a deposit, which is a form of unearned revenue. We have a couple different methods we can deal with unearned revenue. You could take a look at presentations on unearned revenue for more detail about them. Now we're imagining that the person comes in and, and is actually going to rent the equipment. We're gonna give them the equipment so we're going to create the invoice uh, at that point in time. So now we're going to make the invoice from the estimates. We'll be able to practice that, making an invoice from the estimate. And we'll also be dealing with the fact that we have an outstanding, in essence, credit for the customer we can apply then to the invoice. Let's recap what we did last time by going to the customer dropdown, customer center, taking a look at this particular customer being customer number five. There's the estimate that we made. If I double click on it, we could see the estimate looks a lot like an invoice, except that it's an estimate and uh, it, there's no impact on the actual financial statements, but I can see you know, what we need to do or what the invoice will look like in essence. We imagined we then took this estimate to calculate what the down payment should be, which we said was 200. We kind of just made up 200 as the down payment amount. Now we're going to create the invoice. We're imagining they come in, they're going to actually get the equipment and we're going to make the invoice. Now we could go into the estimate here and then create an invoice this way from the estimate. I can also close this back out. If someone came into the store and I didn't know who they were or something like that, I could go to the transactions and look at the estimates this way, find the transaction there, or I can simply go into my home page and create an invoice or go into the invoice in any way we so choose and type in customer number five, customer number five. I got the correct customer this time. And then it's it says here that we have 
an estimate to the invoice. So here's our estimate. If I want to select that to create the invoice, then it's going to populate that stuff on over to the invoice. I'm going to change the date to 022722, customer number five, terms. Let's say it's net 30 on the terms, our standard terms. And there we have it. It pulled in our our rental stuff, which we said we set up an item for a standard band, two guitars, an amp, we're saying drum set, microphones. And then they wanted some added guitars and added amps to really blast out the stuff. So now we've got our invoice at this point in time populated from the estimate fairly straightforward at this point with regards to the invoice, except that we now also have to apply out the credit. Now, a quick look on, on the credit. We saw it on the customer center here. Uh, in here, there's the, the $200 so we can see the payment that needs to be applied out. Also, just realize if I look at the balance sheet and I look at the sub ledger for the accounts receivable, by going to the reports drop down and go into the customers and receivable, the customer balance detail report. And I look at customer number five here, it shows up as a negative amount. That's what I mean by saying it's not exactly right for uh, reporting purposes at this point in time because it should be a positive liability, not a negative receivable, but it matches out great when we're trying to make an invoice from it and apply this 200 out to the invoice, which we will do now after that point in time, it's not a problem anymore because now the accounts receivable is, would be correct. So it's a timing kind of difference uh, issue. Any case, let's go back on over and say, okay, let's go to the invoice and let's say we want to add uh, or apply a credit. So the changes to this, I'm going to say, okay, save the changes. You've changed the terms. Yes, I changed the terms. And there's the credit. So we're going to apply out that $200. That's the one we want. So I'm going to say done. There it is. Now notice it changes the total down here to 2060, which is great because now we can give this to them and that shows what is actually owed. But uh, the but this 200 is really kind of more of a just an informational uh, type of thing. Also note before I forget, now that it says past due, that it should be 2023 up top, not uh, 2022, sorry about that. But, so there it is. Okay, so what's this gonna record then? It's an invoice, it's gonna increase the accounts receivable, not by the 2060, but by the 2260. The 200 credit is already on the accounts receivable, it's just showing here on the form for informational purposes. What needs to be happening to our finances are the 2260 needs to increase the AR. The other side is going to go to sales and it's going to be applied out by the uh, amounts up top, not including any sales tax, although there is no sales tax. And then, so so it, therefore it's just going to be the 2260. And then there's no sales tax. There's no impact on the uh, inventory and the customer sub ledger will be impacted as well by the 2260 because there's already 200 there for the prepayment then it'll bring the proper balance to 2060 let's save it and close it and check it out so their payment supplied yes okay so if i go back to the balance sheet we go into double clicking on the good old ar accounts receivable then down here there's the 2260 if i double click on it note once again it's not recording the 2060, but the 2260. That 200 is here already because it was there on the payment that happened before. So I'm gonna close this back out. If I go to the customer uh, detail, we could see it here as well. So there's the 2260. Again, the full invoice is applied and the payment is now being tied to the invoice. That's what we would expect to see normally in reverse order, however the full invoice and then the payment after. But look how nicely it works out here that we get to see the full invoice and then the payment tying out to it. That's great from like a bookkeeping standpoint. I can also see that in the customer center. I can go into customer number five. I could say, okay, there's, there's the estimate we made. There's the prepayment that we had and there's the invoice and the balance due at this point in time is the total of the 2060. So if someone if they asked us questions or someone is talking to the customer, 
pretty straightforward. Everything looks basically normal, even though it happened in a bit reverse order than a normal kind of sales type of transaction. Okay, so there is that. If I go back to the, let's go to the profit and loss, the other side of it was recorded in rental income. Now note that we decided when we set up the item to not just put it into service revenue, but rather into rental income. Want to just reiterate that that's not a bad, that's, that's a matter of our personal choice as to how many income accounts we want. But remember that we want the major big categories of income accounts. We don't want to have like a separate income account for every service item we have if we're using a full service bookkeeping system because if we're using sales receipts and invoices, we will have the sub reports, which can be found in the reports drop down, sales, sales by sales by item. And if I change the date from 010123 to 123, so now I've got the added items here and it'll it'll give us the total revenue 68711 which should tie out to the 68711 here and give it by item that we sold. So we don't want all these different line items as different income accounts, just the major groupings of income accounts which we decided that the equipment rental income was large enough, different enough to have its own income line item. Now let's just go back to the customer center real quick and I can see it like if I double click on this estimate, we could see this estimate was the one that was used to make the invoice and you can see a bit more detail on the left hand side where we have the summary. So the open balance that's still open on basically the invoice that we have and we've got the recent transactions down below. I'm going to close this back out. We then have the invoice, which is currently open at this point in time. So now we're going to say that there's a payment. Let's assume that we got the payment on the invoice. We can apply the payment by going to receive payment in the open invoice here, or we can just go to the home page and say we received a payment from the customer. And I'm just going to type in customer number five. Customer number five gave us a payment. And this is going to be two, or I'll just click on it down here. They paid us the full amount 2060 on 228, let's say. 228, it's going to go into undeposited funds. So this is the normal process at this point. Customer payments decrease in the accounts receivable for customer number five on the subledger. And it's going to decrease for the amount that's remaining, the 2060. The full invoice was 2260. We already got the 200 down payment, therefore the 2060 is what is now remaining. We'll keep it as a cash payment. Notice I have it for 2022, that should be up to 2023. We're working in 2023. I'm gonna say okay, and then I'm gonna close it out this way and say close, and then say yes to save it. And then if I go into my AR on the balance sheet, accounts receivable, then I should have this amount. There it is. There's the payment. There's the invoice. There's the payment. Closing this back out. The other side is going to be going to the undeposited funds, which is right there, the 2060. The subledger for the, uh, cus the, the customer balance detail, let's say. Now we've got the prepayment that happened here. Then we invoiced, and then we've got the payment. So these two payments are applied out to that invoice. If I see it in the customer center, then I could say, okay, number invoice number five, here's the invoice that was created from the estimate. We had the down payment and then these two payments assigned to it. So if I go into this invoice, we can see it's been paid here. So we have it uh, as having been paid. I'm gonna close this back out and let's go ahead and just make the deposit now. So I'm gonna close this out and finish this, this whole cycle up. So now we have the receive payment, putting it into undeposited funds, which we saw on the balance sheet. The one here represents what's in undeposited funds, which has been created from either a sales receipt or in this case, the receive payment. Let's go into that and just finalize this. Imagine we're going to the bank at the end of the day, check it off, the 2060 we're gonna put in the bank. Okay, that's the only thing we need to include. So we'll keep it, let's change the date this time, 2023. Can you get the date right for once? for once in the for crying out loud okay i get it so so this is going to increase the checking account the other side's going to go undeposited funds bring that back down save it close it pour favor 
balance sheet, checking account, zooming in and going down in to the deposit in 2060. Looks good. Mui B in closing that back out. How you be in? I'm Mui B in. Any case, the other side's in undeposited funds, which we can't see right now. So I could see it by going to the customize up top and we can go to the advanced and let's say we want to see the active stuff. Okay. Okay. And then there's the undeposited funds, checking it, doubling, clicking it. There is the deposit. So everything looks hunky to Dory. I asked Dory how it looks and Dory's like, this is hunky, says Dory. It's hunky Dory. Anyways, so now let's go and check our numbers. Reports drop down, accounting and taxes, trial balance. Let's do the range change 010123 to 123. Let's customize the report to the fonts, to the numbers, to change the font up to 14. Okay. Yes and okay. So you can, if everything ties out, great. If not, try changing the date range. You can see that I made some date issue problems, which was totally intentional, just to demonstrate what normal people have problems with sometimes, even though I don't have any problems with anything ever. But what, so in any case, uh, you can drill down and make changes to stuff. And we will we'll take a look at the transaction detail report uh, which will be better to help us to drill down and find any other problems or discrepancies that may exist.